everyone, we are Hellas Giraffes and this is our presentation of our solution to the Rescue Line Challenge. We are Corinne, Sintian, Faith and Isabel and this is our first year participating in the RoboCup Rescue Line Challenge. The Rescue Line Challenge involves line tracking, obstacle avoidance and sorting black and white and silver balls. We chose to use simple hardware packed with complex software. And in the end, we managed to complete line tracking and obstacle avoidance. There are four main parts of our robot design. Uh, first, we use treads instead of wheels to navigate the unfriendly terrain, for example, slopes, more easily as treads allow the robot to move up ramps more smoothly than wheels. Uh, number two, we use the two motors, one on each side of the robot, which help the robot move and turn more evenly. We use two ultrasonic sensors, which sense distance from another object to detect and navigate around obstacles. The front ultrasonic sensor is used to sense obstacles, and it allows the robot to identify when to execute obstacle avoidance code. The left ultrasonic sensor is used to wall follow around the obstacle, such that the distance between the robot and the obstacle always remains constant at 40 mm. We chose to place the left ultrasonic sensor at the top left of the robot as it allows us to maintain the distance of 40mm between the robot and the obstacle most accurately so that the robot does not crash into the obstacle. On the other hand, in our rejected design, the ultrasonic sensor at the bottom left of the robot would not be able to sense the obstacle after the robot has turned right in step 2 as the sensor would not be directly in front of the obstacle since, it's lo since it is located at the back. Additionally, we use two color sensors to help with line tracking as they help the robot detect black, which is the color of the line, and white so it can stay on and follow the line, as well as green so it can turn in the right direction. Due to the limitation of only six parts on the spike time, we had to improvise by doing without a third motor as we were unable to connect another motor to act as a scoop to complete the rescue segment. Part of the code is a custom move steering function, which we created for our tank drive and is modeled after the EV3 block code move steering block. As seen in the diagram below, because of the tank drive, the left and right motors drive in opposite directions. So in order for the left motor to move forward, the left motor is set to a negative speed. These two functions tell the robot whether to turn left or right by using single line sensing instead of double line sensing. For example, when using right, right side single line sensing, the center of the robot will be on the right side edge of the black line. Therefore, instead of following both sides of the line, as seen in double line sensing, the robot only follows the side that it needs to turn. The, the two functions below act as add-ons for the previous functions. By measuring the angle of the wheels, which is equivalent to motor rotations, these two functions act as a timer to tell the robot when to use single and when to use double line sensing. The next function scans for green squares using the color sensors that we use for line tracking. When the color that the sensors read pass off threshold for what is considered green, we add one to the variables checked left and checked right. We also use the hue saturation value scale, which is better known as HSV, rather than the green, red, green, blue scale, which is also known as RGB. We did this for mainly two reasons. Firstly, the spike prime only offers the HSV scale, and secondly, HSV is generally more reliable than RGB, as it produces less false negatives. The next function is our main line tracking code. The main line tracking code utilizes both sensors on the bottom of our robot. In automation and control systems, a popular algorithm is the proportional integral derivative, better known as PID. This algorithm is used for self-driving cars, drones, and even rockets. However, the tuning for more variables gets increasingly complicated, and so we decided to only use the proportional factor for our baseline tracking code. Further improvement of this code could be the addition of the derivative factor as it will dampen the correction of the proportional so as to make the movement of the robot more accurate. The next function is our obstacle avoidance code. The robot uses its front ultrasonic sensor to keep moving forward until it is less than 40 millimeters from the obstacle. Then the robot turns 90 degrees to the right and uses its left ultrasonic sensor to move parallel to the side of the object while maintaining a 40 millimeter distance at all times. For when the robot reaches an intersection, according to the rules of the challenge, the robot will not turn during an intersection.
The next function controls the overall steering of the robot by checking the number of positive values in order to determine if there is an intersection, if the robot should make a U-turn, or if the robot should turn left or right. Regarding our innovative solution, our best piece of code is that we use single line sensing instead of programming it to turn as soon as it sees green so that the robot will never turn when a green square appears after a black line. No AI tools were used in the whole process of preparing for this competition. During the preparation process, our team faced many challenges, such as having to complete the challenge with only 6 pots in the spike time. However, it is important to learn from these struggles and face them with perseverance. We have listed some quotes on this slide to encourage and motivate you through hard times, and we hope that they brighten your day. Thank you for watching and we hope you got to learn more about our project.